This is the Jeff Orvid Show. I remember back in the early, it was like late 1990s and early 2000s. Talking Clinton, we're talking, you know, Clinton was the one that got China into the World Trade Organization and all that and opened up the floodgates here. Bush, Bush Jr., you should call him Baby Bush, but I'll be a little more respectful today and say Bush Jr. <laughs> he was, these presidents have been such a train wreck for so long, right? I know. Yeah. <laughs> How do you get this happen election after election? But anyway, Bush Jr., he, he was big on, you know, globalization. Mm-hmm. Let's, you know, we're going to open up and, you know, there's going to be jobs in Mexico. Remember, everything went mm-hmm. to Mexico for a little yeah. while. And all those jobs, it was even... They used to, and they probably still do, but they manufactured so much over Mexico across yeah, the border. Yeah, they were doing cars and other yeah, stuff. Yeah, so much. Stuff, uh, our Chevy Tau from 2003, that was all assembled and made yeah. in Mexico or something like that, right? You don't see that anymore. Yeah. As much, right? I mean, it's cheaper for them to ship a, a toilet from China or something than it is to ship it across the border in cheaper Mexico, mm-hmm. right? So we, we were all br- brought into this globalization is going to be such a good thing and we'll offshore these jobs because- we're Americans, right? I mean, yeah. we, we can't be bothered with that menial work. Yeah, we're, no. We're too busy thinking. <laughs> we're going to think think stuff up, right? I mean, that's all that's all we got to do. We don't got to produce anything. We're just, we're just going to think <laughs> and blow things up, right? I mean, you know, yeah. I mean, how many conflicts have we had, right? We're, we're thinking and thinking and destroying, basically, right? Yeah. So the rest of the world's making and making and making, you know, and, and here we go, 20 plus years later, 25 years later into this great experiment. Uh-oh. You know, like, uh-oh. And then COVID hits, right? COVID what hits. What do you mean we don't have masks? We, we don't have, we here. can't even make a mask. We have which pills, would be a blessing Tylenol, at this point. and Yeah, but medica- you're right, yeah. medication. So that's a problem. You know, we get, we get these vital things from countries that aren't always our friends. Well, and no you one know, realizes it. You and don't know. You, you don't even know. Like, what you I don't anymore. know that my Tylenol or whatever ibuprofen and stuff doesn't isn't made here. Yeah, I mean, All who knows? So and many amoxicillin and mm-hmm. things like that. Yeah, who, who knew? So a lot of the stuff is being made in China, mm-hmm. not exclusively. Southeast Asia is a big market. I mean, uh, China's become too expensive. So when were we in Vietnam? What what year was that? Two thousand ten. Uh, seven. Seven. Okay, it was that long seven. ago, right? Yeah. There was st- factories opening up all over the place, and that was mm-hmm. f- 15, 15 plus years ago, 16 years ago at this mm-hmm. point. So v- they're, they're in Vietnam, they're in Laos, they're in, um, I call it Cambodia. Burma. Yeah, Cambodia. It's not Burma anymore. What's it called? Myanmar. Myanmar. I mean, they're moving over there because it's cheaper. So, yeah, the big globalization. So all of our supplies are coming from further and further places. And then in the recent past couple of years, it's become like even food. You know, we mm-hmm. produce, we, we are the breadbasket to the world, I think, right? I yeah. mean, but, but. At least for our own country, yeah. we were able to produce but a go, lot. Go to the, yeah. and that's scary because it, we start relying on other countries to produce even our food or components yeah. that go into food. Well, because we start to think like, oh, well, we don't have enough water and we don't have enough so workers. Let them do it. And so we'll just have someone else do it and buy it from them until they don't have it or they decide they, they don't want to first. sell it to us yeah. anymore yeah. and then we don't have it cuz all the farmland has been scapped up yeah it's turned it into development or the water rights are taken or whatever the case may be yeah so you go to the store and you look at um look at some of the apple juice if you buy apple juice i try to buy oh like yeah the, that's from china yeah it's like china sometimes it's from south america and this and that but you like china fish Meat, even if it's, you don't even know where it's from anymore, this stuff. Yeah. You know, farm-raised fish from China. And I'm just mm-hmm. like, ooh. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. That just sounds like I'm going to get something, like, like I'm going to eat it and my arm's going to fall off or something, <laughs> right? I mean, it just doesn't sound good to me. Yeah. And right. the fact that it's got to be well, shipped. Well, it's not fresh. You, then you know it's fresh. <laughs> I'm I always mean, skeptical when I'm inland and it's like, oh, yeah. we've got fresh yeah. seafood. And I was like, how's that possible? Yeah. You know, it's like you're a thousand miles from the ocean, right? So anyway, we bought in. We bought in. We were sold a bill of goods once again by our politicians. What's good old George Bush doing nowadays? Though? Hanging out at his ranch, doing this, having a good time, you know, enjoying the yeah. perks of what? What he he reminds me of all these other people that have been like Biden that have been there forever, mm-hmm. right? And then mm-hmm. they lived the happy life. At least Bush got out early enough, right? Yeah, Biden's still doing this thing. Took him a little longer, I guess. Um, but anyway, I digress. Um, so yeah, we, we hit COVID. 
And all of a sudden we can't get anything. Yeah. And right. and there's all these holes in our in our shopping stores where stuff was. It's gotten mm-hmm. better, right? Oh yeah, for sure. But what yeah, about what about when it happens again? What if something happens? What if what if we have what if we have a war? What if we go to war with man, I hope this doesn't happen. What if we go to war with China? Yeah. Where I mean, our stuff's being made. Yeah. This would be like in nineteen uh in, in World War Two going um Everything was getting made in Japan, and, and, then, yeah. and then we went to war with them. And then all How of would a sudden, that have worked yeah, out? That stuff yeah, is is unavailable now. Exactly. Yeah. So, some people are starting to wise up. Okay, we're starting to re-insource things, um, strategic things, mm-hmm. which I think is a good thing. I think we should be able to manufacture certain things in, in the United States. I'm also a free market guy, though. I think, hey, if you can get the cheaper stuff, people love going to Walmart. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And or whatever big box store you're going to. Mm-hmm. And the reason why that stuff's still cheaper is because other places have lower labor costs. So right. they're able to pass. So it's cheaper to ship it thousands of miles on a big ship. Yeah. Than yeah. to make they it here. The still, regulations exactly, and the exactly. expensive labor. Yeah. yeah. And we were talking about minimum wage last hour. If you, you missed that, go back and listen to the podcast. It's going up in Arizona and Flagstaff in particular again. Before you know it, it's going to be 20 bucks. What was it going up to? 1740, I think. 1740 in Flagstaff, January Come 1st. January, yeah. right. So very expensive to produce something in Flagstaff. So anyway, we started re I mean, people are like, okay, this is a problem. Mm-hmm. What's one of the biggest problems? The chip manufacturers. Not potato yeah. chips, chips. Although the bag of chips probably has a chip in it at this point, or, or I will know, soon. Everything does. Yeah, I mean everything. You things you don't even think of. They yeah. Didn't she's like an air now. freshener? You were looking yeah, at like I saw air a commercial <laughs> for a plug-in air <laughs> freshener chip. that you just you plug into the wall, and it's like ours has a microchip, so we know exactly how much to you know freshener to release. And I don't want to buy that. I don't it's need a crazy. microchip who, in my... Who would have thought? Yeah. I mean, or send me one and I'll try it for free. <laughs> but I don't want to try that. So anyway, there's chips and everything, so... I don't need a smart air freshener, though. Yeah. That's that's a, I mean, it's getting a little silly. Yeah. It's getting a little it's silly good, out yeah. there. So we've got this plant down in... It's in Phoenix, right? Mm-hmm. It's Phoenix. Yeah, just North south Phoenix, of 303. 303. You've probably seen it. This thing is a monster. Yeah, it's huge. What is that thing? 40 billion? I don't know. I want to say forty billion. Yeah, it's billions know. of dollars. I mean, look, that thing is huge. Delays mm-hmm. that they're having. Read that one. Um, and also, they're they're you know you think you're insourcing this stuff. So this is Taiwan Semiconductor, the largest chip manufacturer in the in the, in the world in yeah, Taiwan. It's which Taiwan is, Semiconductor Manufacturing Company TSMC. Okay, Taiwan Semiconductor right. for short, right. right? I mean, this is the largest semiconductor company in the world. They're mm-hmm. in Taiwan. Taiwan as we I'm sorry, China as we speak has surrounded Taiwan in an exercise. They do this from time to time. I can't remember how many dozens and dozens of ships and aircraft they're just floating around there. If China mm-hmm. wants to take Taiwan, we have a pretty small contingent there. That's where most right. of the world's semiconductors comes from, is right. that little island nation right yeah. there. So they decide to build a plant here. Only the, after the plant being, is $40 billion. $40 billion. Yeah. Okay, see, my mind still works, yeah, despite the, the colors on my it's shirt It's supposed here. to be operational in 2025. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so Except 2025. there has been delays, and the chip manufacturing company, the Taiwan company, um, has blamed it on a lack of skilled U.S. workers. <laughs> That's why it's been delayed. They're probably telling the truth. <laughs> it's probably the um, regulations. Yeah. It's well, it could it be might that not be the skill. It might yeah. be the delays because of this permit. Well, we have tons inspection. of skilled workers, but they're working, and there's not enough of them, quite frankly. Yeah. Because I'm going to be honest with you here. There's a lot of people in this country that have gotten training and degrees in absolutely useless crap. Mm-hmm. So there's not enough skilled workers. That's why if, if, if there's anything I can say for your kids or your grandkids, and we try to do this as best we can, and we ain't perfect by any means because we, you know, we've faulted on a lot of things in their education and, and training and, and mm-hmm. so on and so forth, is train and teach your kids in real stuff because they're yeah. going to have a bright future because there's going to be probably the majority that don't know how to literally screw in a light bulb, mm-hmm. and then there's going to be people that know how to do stuff. And that's going to be really valuable. So I, I believe Taiwan Semiconductor, they're probably like, oh, man, we're dealing yeah, with... Yeah, what the heck is taking so going long? on with the workforce yeah. here? Why mm-hmm. can't we... How many business owners do you know? I, I know personally I do. They can't hire anybody for any amount. They just can't right. hire anybody. Yeah. Again, go back to last hour and the minimum wage. I said the minimum wage should be zero. 
And people hear that and say, yo, you're heartless. You want people to work for free. We want slaves, Jeff. You want indentured servants. And I say that because there's no way right now somebody would get, nobody work for zero. But even at the minimum wage of 1680, you can't hire anybody. Yeah. You're paying right. 20 bucks, 25 bucks, 30 bucks an hour to get people to do things and giving them bonuses and stuff. So they can't find workers. So the, there's delays on this to manufacture chips because why do we want the chips manufactured here? They're so they everything. can be stamped made in the USA. Well, okay. well, that's good. Yeah, that's good by a Taiwanese company. But why do we want the chips to be made here in America? Because we want them here strategically because we know the world is a crazy place. We know that Taiwan could be overrun. We know that there's conflicts all around the world. We know we need these things. It's vital to our nation to keep everything going. So it's good. We're going to have all these chips manufactured here and they're going to be just flowing out from this manufacturing facility in the desert in Phoenix, right? $40 billion facility. By the way, which you're helping pay for because of the CHIPS Act. The CHIPS Act passed to help subsidize companies like Taiwan Semiconductor and others so they can build the $40 billion plant because they can't afford it themselves. This multi-billion yeah. dollar international behemoth can't make can't pour the concrete, can't pay for that themselves, right? Do you believe that? Yeah. You know, I got a bridge to sell you if you believe that or some ice cream for Biden. Anyway, they, so we, but anyway, let's just say, okay, fine. We're going to help subsidize this because we want the chips to go directly from Phoenix to the distribution center in LA to the distribution center in Tulsa. I don't know. Yeah, where wherever. Right? Yeah. So that they can go to the uh, manufacturing place somewhere mm -hmm. to be put in a car or the refrigerator or the air freshener, <laughs> right? Yeah. It's good. Nope. No. No, no, I'm, that's, not, that's not what's going to happen. Do you know where they're going? They're getting manufactured, not yet, but when it opens up, in Phoenix. So it's stamped USA, made in mm -hmm, America. Mm -hmm. Which looks good for looks Biden. Very good. Yeah, uh -huh, and uh -huh. Biden and whoever else follows. Yep. They're shipping them back to Taiwan. <laughs> they're going to ship the chips. The whole idea <laughs> is back to that Taiwan. they were going to be manufactured here, and that is a good strategic yeah. location. And now... They aren't building a packaging facility to package them, so they need to take that or ship them to Taiwan to be packaged, yeah. only to be brought back here. This sounds worse than where we were. Because so now we've got the exposure, or they do, in shipping the chips that are helped subsidized by the US taxpayer across the Pacific. Now Taiwan is, is south of again, south uh, southwest of uh, of China, right? Uh -huh. Right there. Uh -huh. What is it? What is well, it like? right out. Yeah. What Just is it? Forty miles off. It's east of China. So I meant east. West of here. Yeah. West of here. Yeah. Get my geography yeah, right. The, the maps. You right got there. a map right there. Let's look at that thing. So yeah, there it is. I'm looking at it. it can't be what sixty miles off the coast of China, something like that, that. right? Yeah. It's so more south. Than that, but yeah. Okay. okay. Whatever. I mean, this maps. It's hard to tell. <laughs> but anyway, so it's 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 more strategic. And safer to, to make them here, ship them all the way back to Taiwan than it is just to manufacture them in Taiwan and ship them here. Why wouldn't I mean, they build and then they a packaging ship them facility yeah. here? So Taiwan Semiconductor is saying they're not going to build the packaging company. This is the most complex thing you of this operation. You cannot make this stuff up. I mean, no. this is ridiculous. I mean, you're building a $40 billion, which I'd have to believe it's going to wind up costing more it's than probably that. Probably more, yeah. Yeah, facility to make high-tech, complicated microprocessors, but you can't package them? What are they packaged in? Plastic wrap or something, right? You've gotten these I chips know. before, like yeah, when you put in like a, it? I don't get like it. a SIM card or a whatever yeah. process. You know, they're usually in a little static package or something, or they yeah. put them in a box, or what are they doing here? What are they wrapping them in? I don't know why it's Something so native hard. to Taiwan? How can we not have a packaging facility? Yeah, you believe this stuff? So th there you go. Well, did, they had to package them somehow to ship them all across. Did our dumb politicians forget in the language of the CHIPS Act, because there's always strings on this stuff, to tell them, by, by the, way, the way, these need to be, you know, stay here and be distributed. Yeah. Well, if you got to sell them overseas, fine, but we, we're, they're going to be packaged. Final product will be done in America if we're going to help subsidize these plants, right? Mm -hmm. And put in taxpayer dollars and, and et cetera, et cetera. You're going to get all these sweetheart deals. No, they're shipping them over. Uh, there you go. I, it's just yeah, you can't make this you, stuff up. Yeah. So yeah, so they're going to ship there. So we've and this is environment. So all the environmentalists are probably happy. Oh, good, the, ch the chips won't have to go all the way across. Is you know they're going to be here already. And now they're it's like twice the distance. <laughs> Talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. <laughs> you, you just I'm I'm shocked every day. Still after seven years of doing this. Yeah.
I'm still shocked. Like, and by the like way, every that article day. was on some it's a trade magazine, right? Yeah, like a, it, it's not on on CNN and yeah, Fox yeah, yeah. and, and nobody's everyone, even. No one's talking about this. No. How ridiculous this is! I bet you, how, I'm the I'm I'm the first one in the country probably talking about this thing. Love to hear from you. Talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. Now to top it off, you won't even have chips. You're probably going to be naked, like those aliens that we talked about last hour. Mm-hmm. The right? E. T. Yeah, 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 the ET yeah. in Mexico, the Mexican scent. Oh, ET! They put a little shirt on him. <laughs> Listen back to the last hour. We're talking about the aliens in Mexico <laughs> from Peru that were a thousand years old and pregnant. <laughs> I'm going to call bunk on that one. Um, but you probably want, because of our great leaders that, you know, globalization and outsourcing everything, we used to actually have, not too long ago, a thriving garment industry. Mm-hmm. Like, close. Yeah. Oh, you know? yeah. This yeah. shirt was the last shirt that they manufactured in this That's country. That's how old it is. That's how old it is. I did put one on today, and it shrunk. It was a little tight. I don't know what <laughs> happened there, so... They, they don't make them like they used to, right? <laughs> Angela shrunk that thing up. It wasn't no, me. I haven't seen that in a long time. So it wasn't me. I'm going to wear that on our honeymoon. <laughs> <laughs> a little smaller, I guess. Anyway, we used to get our clothes. We used to be able to actually clothe, clothe ourselves, right? I mean, mm-hmm. now, like I was saying, more and more food is produced overseas. You know, and that used to be is. unheard of. Yeah. Our clothing is long gone. But believe it or not, Berkshire Hathaway was, um, that's Warren Buffett's company. Uh-huh. It was back in the 60s, though. That was a garment company. He mm. bought it, the shell of it, because they had money sitting around. And, and then he turned that into basically a holding company. Just a little side note there. Um, but now the garment industry is saying they're going to lose and potentially we're going to have clothing problems because of well, the, climate the, change. Uh, yeah, the... Okay. The headline is extreme weather may cost the global fashion industry sixty five billion dollars by twenty thirty. Okay, because 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 of climate change. Because why? It's, it's because it's gonna be they harder say to grow cotton or you something? know a lot of garments are made in Southeast Asia, meaning like they, Bangladesh, they just, Vietnam, Cambodia, Pakistan, kind of over in that. East and Central Asia. Okay, right next, Southern Asia. right next to the packaging facility for the chips. Yes, yeah, s- ship basically back there. Okay. not too far. They'll go okay. on the same boat back. Yeah, probably, yeah. yeah. You get yeah. close and yeah. your well, chips returned. Believe it or not, it's hot and humid there, and it rains a lot. <laughs> and so because of that, they're going to be like underwater. They're going to, they just won't oh be able gosh. to work anymore. And so the people, yeah, they're just, they're, there's, we're, we're gonna, just not so, going to be... So basically, there's going to be less materials available. It's going to cost more. We're going to well, have less, less clothing. R- right. And, and Okay. Yeah. And... It's always Like, the been, people might not get enough hydration, and, and it's just going to cause this whole disruption in that whole manufacturing of garments. These, these people are so ridiculous. It's, it's Southeast Asia. It's it's one of the most humid places on the yeah, planet Yeah, and Earth. Southeast Asia is one of the more productive areas yeah. of the world as far as, yeah. like, the workforce and stuff. Uh, they just are. They're, yeah. They're, they just are. So. Despite the humidity. Yeah, and it... <laughs> I don't know. We, we were in Vietnam in 2007. We were just saying... In August. And yeah, it was hot and humid that back then. And it, it rained. Yeah, it was one of the most humid <laughs> places I've, I've ever been to. Yeah. It was, it was just excruciating. And when, when we were there, I was thinking about... Poor, poor guys that got drafted to go to this place. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, and right. oh, unbelievable. Well, all it's right. so funny because sometimes these things say that, like, it's all projections. Yeah. It's all, like, they don't know. nearly one million jobs will be lost. And, oh, you so know, the expected impact of, so of, of adverse weather. And it's just always, like, theory. Yeah. That's all it is with yeah. these people is theory. And then they're never around to have to prove it differently because they just want the headline today. Talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. Get your comments in. This is the Jeff Orovitz Show. All right, welcome back. Hey, a couple of reminders. Please subscribe to that podcast. Appreciate everybody who's done that. Um, look up the Jeff Orvit Show. Or if you're watching a video on YouTube, hit subscribe right now. If you're watching a video on Rumble, hit follow. And uh, share it with a couple of friends. Uh, you got to have a friend out there to like at least one or two things we say per show, right? 
maybe maybe There's three. There's got to be a few that like There's got to be a few. I hope. One more thing on the environment and how, you know, climate change is ruining everything, including apparently now our clothes yeah. is going to be impacted. I guess they're watching this, this latest hurricane might go up to like New England. Oh, uh-huh. yeah. You see yeah. That? Like Maine, mm-hmm. maybe category two or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, not the end of the world. And I pointed out, I found research from uh, this, this, I can't cite the, the name of the group now or the university or whatever that did this, but last week or two, maybe two weeks ago, talked about how they're pretty certain that, which how do they know anything at this point, but they were pretty certain that Maine and New England used to get massive Category 5 hurricanes from like the year 500 to like the 1500s based mm-hmm. on sediment layers and all this stuff. Yeah. Um, so if that's true, this it goes to show you how nothing, this is very normal. Mm-hmm. So, But you know, if a Category 2 makes it up to Maine, what are they looking at this weekend or something? It's coming up yeah. here pretty quick. yeah. I don't follow weather too much because I find it to be so inaccurate at this point. Right, um, yeah. It, it could move before yeah, that or, exactly. or weaken. Um, you watch. If it hits there and it's strong, because sometimes they get nasty storms. Remember the movie The Perfect Storm? Mm-hmm. And that was like in winter or fall or something like that, yeah. I, I believe. Um if it hits hard in Maine, it'll be you'll hear the climate change yeah. yelling once again. Okay, uh, let's get to some comments. Talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. Nicola. Mm-hmm. I pronounced your name right. I think so. Okay, thank you. Uh, on guards in schools. I'm oh. with Angela on the armed guards at school issue. I responded immediately in the negative and added an earful, uh, she said textful, uh, about exactly why this is unnecessary. I've got a second grader. And the last thing that my child needs to see at this elementary school is an armed guard walking around. Can we keep a little bit of innocence, please? Remind everyone what exactly this is about. Exactly my point. Yeah. Yeah. This is well. Uh, schools are yeah. Schools are starting to think about getting armed security guards. Yeah, uh, you know, posted or wandering or whatever. I don't know what they're going to do, and and maybe get like retired police or someone, you know, that's mm-hmm. definitely qualified to deal if someone with uh, was to attack pay or somebody. come pay, in. Yeah, yeah, pay somebody. Pay to come someone in. to do mm-hmm. it. This is well, by, by the way. This is a Flagstaff. This is a, a nationwide issue, but this specific one yeah, was in Flagstaff. Right. So. I mean, where we go, it's private school, and so you're dealing with tuition in one way or another. Maybe you get help with tuition from ESA or from tax credits, but either way, hiring a security guard would cost mm-hmm. m- more money. Yeah. And so the school our kids go to, Flagstaff Christian School, has recently put a kind of ask out to the parents, are you in favor of this or not? It's going to cost X amount if we do it. And Which I appreciate them putting it out there. Yeah, because, they're asking yeah, they're opinion. Ask, like FUSD would just do it. Right. Right. And or, that's, or, or that's on the taxpayer. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, dime. they don't care because yeah. it's them. Yeah. Right. So that's what she's talking about because I, yesterday I was saying the same thing that I responded, no, I'm not in favor of that because I don't want them to feel like, you know, they need to be protected at all times from yeah. a, a very, very minor. That's what Nicholas said threat. too. It's like, yeah, yeah, so it's, she agreed with me, yeah, and I don't know how yeah. other people feel about it. And this stems we'll from, there was a school shooting just a couple of days ago, not in Flagstaff, but then Flagstaff had a lockdown at like a middle right, school, because right? because someone said Someone said they thought gun. they saw someone yeah. with a, and he said, yeah. no, it said gun, it was a weapon. A weapon, okay. Weapon. And it turned out to be, the last report I saw was nothing. Yeah. But people are an abundance of caution nowadays because right. there's concerns. But what I get concerned about even more is, you know, you worry about this stuff. You worry about your kids. Of course. What, but who, I mean, who doesn't? anytime I want my you're kids on a to be plane, safe. you you worry until your kid's on the ground or a- anything, or, yeah. you know, whatever it is. You're it, in a car and you it, worry. Isabel's, that it just is. Isabel's 20 and last night she's over and she leaves and you always think, I hope she makes home safe. Yeah. Right. Driving across yeah, town. I, I mean, know. that never goes away. Right. But what I don't want is, I agree with you on this. I don't want my kids to feel like. Am I in danger? Why is there security guard there? Right. Why, why is there always somebody walking around? Why are we always having these lockdowns? Yeah. Why are we always, why we always have like a prison like environment? Why is it someone always watching over me? Mm-hmm. Uh, the world's changed, obviously. So I want them to be safe. I, I know that the way to go. I told you the way to go yesterday. It is to allow carry concealed on the campuses. Mm-hmm. Private schools can do that. You can if well, you have and carry this concealed. School does yeah. Allow if you that. have a, if you have a CCW. And mm-hmm. you can go fill out the paperwork with the school or whatever, something like that. And you are allowed to, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, so why not hire for all schools, safety officers, call them what you, no, not even that, not safety officers. Why not allow the staff to carry? 
if right. they want to, if they have, yeah. if they have the proper training. Maybe even it's a step up from CCW. You get CCW and you get somebody must do a training course for security guards, right? right. Yeah. Or something. You have to go to right. this course in, I'm just making this up, Tempe that teaches for, it's an eight week course. It's a four week, two week course, whatever. Yeah. What happens That's, in the yeah. event of what happened, someone. Yeah. And you have yeah. to every year uh-huh. get, you have to go out to Timberline and take the low light, you know, environment shooting or right. the, you know, they There's do all these things. There's a simulation. There's a simulation. Yeah. They, oh, yeah. Rob, yeah. Rob oh, yeah, at a Timberline. Yeah. Has yeah. a simulation in a school, a school incident. Mm-hmm. And you have to, and, and has all kinds of different simulations about how to react under different situations, mm-hmm. quick response to things. So you just have them have to get constantly updated. I guarantee you there's, especially if you look at the big schools, any, any school, let's, let's pick a high school and flag staff. I guarantee you there's several teachers there that are firearms enthusiasts that maybe even are um, retired law enforcement mm-hmm. or military or something. They'd be like, yeah, okay, yeah, I'll sign up for that. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. and maybe just throw in a little extra, you know, an extra, you know, you get an extra $150 a month to help you with training. Right. 250 so whatever. Something. You know, yeah. I mean, this is not, why do we make things so complicated? I don't this know. This is not complicated. Put up a big sign in front of the school. Our school has participates in the carry concealed program. You know, we have staff that's mm-hmm. armed. Right. Done. Yeah. Well, it solves a lot of, of the problems. You're not going to have people. Was asking, well, okay, you allow staff that are qualified to carry a weapon, mm-hmm. but do any of them actually do that? Because, yeah, 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 you allow them to, but is, there, is there? there any there? I don't know. And maybe if there is, parents who are in favor of the security guard might feel better feel that better. like knowing, yeah, there is one every day or two mm-hmm. every day or whatever that have a carried concealed or whatever. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that might be helpful information to know from the school is does anyone. Yeah. Carry but concealed? we know that the public schools don't. Oh no. And that's yeah, where I'm most kids school. go. Yeah. Most kids are going to the public schools still. I am baffled. Why? This blows my mind every day that most kids are still going to these public government mm-hmm. schools, but whatever. Start getting on your, uh, well, it's probably useless in, in Flagstaff, to be honest with you, the board members and stuff. Yeah. But if you're in a school district that's not insane or you're going to a place like, like you're in Camp Verde, you're in Cottonwood, you're in Prescott or whatever where, you know, you can still go to a school mm-hmm. board meeting and actually listen to you. It's like, yeah, what, what is, why don't we get to these, you know, carry concealed options or something? Now, I don't know if there's anything state law that needs to change or not. Yeah. I right. think that they would have probably, to pass something down yeah. there. But where's the will? This is such an easy fix. This is something yeah. like we could actually... You talk about, oh, let's, let's, uh, we got to figure out how, what to do about the national debt. It's like unfixable at this point, mm-hmm. but something like this protecting our kids is so easy. Uh, your thoughts, maybe someone's had an experience with this. We'd love to hear from you because you guys are, you guys are pretty dang smart at out there. You know, we had law enforcement yesterday send in the actual uh, statute and the, uh, on the left hand lane drivers, yeah, uh-huh, you know, I stuff that. like that. So we yeah. always want to hear from you. Talk yeah. with Jeff. At iCloud.com. That's talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. All right, a new study came out. I like the site um, studyfinds.org. They have all these kind of oddball studies that mm-hmm. companies put out and you know research this government's universities etc cetera, etc cetera. Mm-hmm. but this one found that the average parent is spending an average of five hours a day on their devices so five hours per day on their devices and on average only four hours actually interacting with their kids and i don't even know what that means anymore even four hours seems like if you're working and stuff and the kids are going to school and they come home, yeah. that's really tough. But I could see kid, parents easily spending more than five hours a day on devices. Oh, Does sure. that count work time? No. Does that count time? You know, you always wonder with yeah. these studies, but how many, I'm guilty of it. I've done it a lot of times in the everyone, morning. I would, yeah. I would bet everyone is guilty of that. I'm on yeah. my phone a lot in the morning, like just doing re- show yeah, research. In the like, mornings, yeah. yeah. I'm drinking my coffee and for like a while, half hour, 45 minutes at least. Usually I'm the first one up and, um, I'm sitting out there and I'm just kind of like, oh, this is an interesting story. Oh, yeah. look, radiation, aliens, mm-hmm. um, Biden, mm-hmm. you know, Whatever. et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. yeah. 
this study, <laughs> for yeah, example. Yeah. Uh-huh. I'm like looking at this and I'm like, this is a good study. And Owen's like, hey, dad. I'm like, hey, wait, wait, wait. Leave me alone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm reading about a study about parents that aren't yeah. paying attention to their kids. <laughs> <laughs> so no, I, a lot of times when they're getting up, I'm like, I try to put it down. I know. I, you know, you know and, I think about just, that sometimes too. Yeah. And in the morning, especially, but like in the evening, you, you know, it's just everyone kind of is like ready to you I'm know, really unwind done. and like yeah. I'm done with conversations or problems. Done with kid I problems. just want to have like some time <laughs> to not think about stuff. I mean, everyone's tired at the end of the day. Yeah. And, you know, kind of needs that like regroup time, a quiet time or whatever, watching a movie or, you know, playing a game, whatever you do on your device. But, and then, yeah, I mean, I had that happen last night where Olivia was like talking, tell, telling me about a problem. Hey, imagine this, Olivia, and you know, when she tells you something, it's not going to be short winded. No. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like nine or something. I mean, not really late, but it's, it's getting to the point where I don't really want to think a whole lot at yeah. that time of night about yeah, so how to solve this thing or whatever. And, and I just, I get I it. feel bad because yeah, sometimes you're like. I just don't know what to say right now. I just, you can tell that I'm like not into it, but whatever she's talking about. But I, you know, I, I really think this is a good idea to, if you can even pick a day and I I've gone back and forth with this, where I've succeeded and I've failed at this, where you say on this day, or even sometimes a weekend, this weekend is going to be no devices weekend. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not doing any research, any streaming, any, I'm not looking at email. I've done that a couple of times where I just, I throw my phone aside. Mm-hmm. I did that like two weekends ago. Mm-hmm. That maybe over Labor Day weekend. And I just threw it, I left it in my truck and I didn't get to it for a couple of days. And um, I, I would suggest that. But maybe yeah. if, if, it's, if that's too extreme for you, if you're like, because we're all like, um, like heroin addicts with these devices at this point. Um, start small and just like say, okay, it's 7 p.m. and I'm not doing it. The problem right. is nowadays is people aren't, watching uh, like a TV because that's mm-hmm. a big thing. People are yeah. like, that's, that's the way most, most people are unwinding at night. They're turning on the TV, mm-hmm. but most people aren't even doing that anymore. They're laying there and they're, they're in their bed even. And they've got the, uh, the phone yeah. or the iPad or whatever. Yeah. I mm-hmm. mean, there may be someone watching a YouTube video. It's like, yeah, you know, if your kids are right there, just, just, you can turn us off. That's okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but it's just maybe just start small. Yeah, They're like, or hey, there, man, uh, after 7 p.m., I'm not going to do it. Yeah, and I know a lot of people are like, well, I don't know how to not. Nah, it's it's an addiction, uh, and, yeah, and you no, don't know where to start. shaking, man. Yeah, and the problem that I find is that um, I could stay away. I mean, I don't do social media anymore. It's very rare that I'm mm-hmm. on social media. You know, I just uh, had, don't have the apps on there. I just I deleted my password, whatever you have to do to not, not, not be in there. go back get, into get it. Get that off your phone. Yeah, and... Then there's, yeah, there's times where I could be like, I'm not checking texts or emails for a day or a weekend or whatever, but I want to listen to music or I want to, yeah. I want to listen to a podcast or 25 whatever. 25 bucks, so you can then, buy a little MP3 player. Yeah. yeah. So then I'm like, I am on the phone. Yep. Just and then you check your that. email. And then yeah. you check it. Yeah. That's, that's the problem. Yeah. There's so much on these things. There's such a blessing, but then they're yeah. also such there's a curse other things. Yeah. at the same time. Right. So it's almost like I have a little um, um, MP3 player that I download a bunch mm-hmm. of stuff on. You can download podcasts onto. You can download this podcast yeah. onto it, and um, and then there's no there's no internet connection. Olivia right. has a phone that has no internet connection. Right. She, we finally yeah. got her a phone, but all it does is text and phone calls and things like that. So well, there's, there's, ways, there's ways to, to do set it. time limits. On I your know, phone too. but you know how to. You could say it. no. I'm nah, Instagram. No. 10 minutes a day and no. then it shuts off. Yeah, it's crap. No, I'm just saying other Yeah, there are ways, but it's help. not going to work. Yeah. Delete, did this years ago, delete the apps from your phone, yeah. the, the, the social media apps, and make yourself go to the computer. Make yourself physically mm-hmm. go to a computer. You'll do it a lot less. All right, that's it for today. Big weekly roundup uh, coming up tomorrow. And uh, remember to just send me those emails and subscribe to the podcast too. Have a great night. See you soon.